This video covers D3 and the SVG group element. The structure of this video is as follows. SVG group element revisited. Grouping SVG elements with D3. D3 and SVG group element transform and the summary. All right, let's get started. SVG group element revisited. The SVG group element is used to group SVG elements together. You can think of the SVG group as a container. The G tag is the SVG group element. Anything inside of the G tag is considered to be inside slash part of the G container. There are two main reasons to use the SVG group element. One, grouping a set of SVG elements with the same attributes, which then lets you apply styling like the fill purple to all the group members. The second main reason to use the SVG group element is for the transform capabilities. You can do transformations like moving the group of elements up, down, left, right, or a combination, being able to skew the elements along the x-axis, being able to skew the elements along the y-axis, being able to scale up or scale down the elements, being able to rotate the elements, or do a combination of some or all the things. The most common and basic transformation we talk about is the translate. This transformation moves all of the elements inside of the G element a certain number of units of X and a certain number of units of Y. The best way to think about this is to think of it as a coordinate space transformation. For instance, everything in the SVG tags is based off of the blue coordinate system, while everything in the G tags is based off of the purple coordinate system. Thus, we have a new coordinate system exclusively for the elements inside of the SVG group tag. The interior data doesn't change, just the origin point that we are using. Alright, let's see what we can do with D3. Grouping SVG elements with D3. Appending an element to the HTML body should be straightforward for you now. This appends two paragraph elements to the body. The append command appends the paragraph element as the last child element of the body element. These two paragraphs come one right after the other because each time they are being inserted as the last child element. To insert a paragraph inside of another paragraph, we have to write something like this. This selects the body. Then it appends a paragraph element as the last child element of the body selection. Then it appends a paragraph element as the last child element of the first paragraph selection. In this way, we are able to append one paragraph element inside of the other. Looking again at the hand-coded example, a few things to point out. One, the parent element is the SVG element. Two, Child elements to the SVG element are the G element and two rectangle elements. 3. The G element and the two rectangle elements are siblings. 4. The G element is the parent to two circle elements. 5. The circle elements are siblings to each other. If we look at it like a DOM tree, then we can see what elements are parents, which are siblings, and which are children. This is important to think about when we are inserting or appending elements using D3. From this, we can see that we want to append the SVG group element to the body selection, and then we want to append the circle elements to the SVG group element selection, and finally, we want to append the rectangle elements to the SVG selection. Let's get back to the JavaScript console to make this work. We start by defining the SVG selection. This gives us the SVG selection. This selection is the parent element. Next, we want to add the SVG group element. Remembering that the SVG keyword for the group element is the letter G, we can append the SVG group element simply as follows. We have added the SVG group element to the SVG body. The append command appended the G element as the last child element of the SVG parent element. This is one of the beautiful things about D3, appending tags, and attributes and their values is the same across the board. Next, let's add the two circle elements. Keep in mind that the relationship between the two elements is sibling and not parent-child. So we want to do two different append commands, not a chained append append command. The two circles now appear inside of the SVG group element. Also, because we did the append command twice instead of chaining the command, the circles are sibling elements. 
Next, let's add the rectangle elements. Remember, the rectangle elements are siblings to the group element, so we have to add them to the SVG selection, not the group selection. Also, remember that the relationship between the two elements is siblings and not parent-child. So we want to do two different append commands, not a chain append append command. The two rectangles now appear inside of the SVG element. They show up as children to the SVG element and as siblings to the SVG group element. Also, notice that they are below the SVG group element. This is because the append command inserts the elements as the last child element in the selection. So each time we did the SVG selection dot append command, it inserted the rectangles last. We now have the circles, the rectangles, and the circles are contained within the SVG group element. Next, let's explore how to add attributes and values to the SVG group element. It is done the exact same way we added attributes and values to any other element with the attribute chain syntax. So we write the following. And now we have purple circles. Notice that the fill purple attribute was added to the SVG group element and not the circle elements. This is what we were talking about when we covered how the SVG group element attributes apply to all of its children. We showed with the JavaScript console how to add the SVG group element with D3, as well as how to add attributes and their values to the SVG group element. Next, let's take a look at how D3 works with the SVG group element to do transformations. D3 and SVG group element transform. The transform equals translate 10 comma 20 is an attribute of the SVG group element. Adding attributes to DOM elements is something we know how to do with D3. Before we go to the JavaScript console, one thing to notice. The attribute name is transform. That is not a big issue. The attribute value is translate, open parentheses, 10 comma 20, close parentheses. This is and can cause a problem. Why is this an issue? Because the 10 and 20 here could be data that is generated elsewhere. And we have to pass in the whole statement, translate open parentheses 10 comma 20 close parentheses as a string, which means two things. One, we have to hard code the string or two, we have to use JavaScript to construct the string. Let's take a look at the JavaScript console for both ways. We continue where we left off. We have two purple circles inside of the SVG group element and two black rectangles. We want to apply the transform to the SVG group element. Remembering that we already have an SVG group element selection, let's apply the translate attribute as a string. The purple circles moved. Look at the HTML output. The transform attribute and value show up as one would expect. We just have to remember how to add attributes and their values to DOM elements using D3. Let's change the translate values of the string by hand to see how it moves around. The purple circles move down as the translate Y coordinate went up. Once again, showing us that the SVG coordinate space Y axis is inverted. Next, let's translate the purple circles out of the SVG viewport. We know the SVG viewport is 200 by 200, so let's make the Y value 280. The purple circles move down as the translate Y coordinate went up. This time, they moved out of the picture. When we hover over the HTML SVG group element, you can see the browser draw where the group element and the purple circles would be if the SVG viewport were big enough. Next, let's bring the group element and the purple circles back to where they started with the translate 10 comma 20. Notice that when we are changing the attribute of the group selection, it is overriding the values. It is not appending more attributes. Let's change the translate values of the string by hand one more time to see how it behaves when we change the X coordinate. The purple circles move to the right as the translate X coordinate went up. This works as expected. Let's look at string concatenation quickly before we go over how to construct the translate string. JavaScript is very relaxed about the difference between strings and numbers. Some programming languages require you to state if a variable is a number or a string before doing anything else with it. Not so in JavaScript. You can even add up numbers and strings. A is a string, num is a number. JavaScript solves the problem by assuming 12 is also a string. So the var my string equals a plus num doesn't break and concatenates the string and number together to give you the result. We can use this to construct the translate string. Let's go back to the JavaScript console. We continue where we left off. First, 
let's test whether we can indeed add a string to a number. We define a as a string. The type of command tells us a is a string. We define num as the number 12. The type of command tells us num is a number. We define my string as a plus num. The type of command tells us that my string is a string. So it worked. We can add a number and a string easily in JavaScript. Going back to constructing the value string for the transform attribute, let's define what we want so that we can check for equality. Next, let's construct the first part of the string. So far, so good. Next, let's add in the number 10. It constructed the string for us. Now that we see how it works, let's construct the rest of the string. We construct the string and check to see if it looks right. Then we do a triple equals test to see if the two values are the same. They are. The last translate we did left the purple circles with a transform translate of 80 comma 20. Let's put the value string into the D3 attribute transform to get it back to translate 10 comma 20. And it worked. You can see that the SVG group element transform attribute is now translate open parentheses 10 comma 20 close parentheses. We can even go so far as to put the string construction into the D3 attribute function. This time, let's make the X coordinate translate 50 and the Y coordinate translate 50. It works exactly the same way. As a parting screenshot, here is the SVG transform translate from the d3js.org website for the basic bar chart example. You can see that the translate value string is constructed right in the D3 attribute operator. And those are the basics of how to manipulate the SVG group element D3, the summary. This video covered the SVG group element revisited, grouping SVG elements with D3, D3 and SVG group element transform, and the summary.